No, I'm not going to start doing knife videos. I have done knife videos in the past. I'm not like a knife guy. Sure, I have knives. Um, a lot of these were actually given to me. I don't know. Actually, I don't know that I bought any of these. These were all gifts to me. And this one I did buy. So this is the video I want to make. I want to make the video basically a non-knife guy that is slightly... I mean, I know enough about knives to probably buy a knife, which I did. Um, but other than that, it's not my world, right? So what I want to say is why did I buy the Guardian Tactical Recon 035? Because in that price point, I yesterday, I don't know whenever this video posts, but I bought this yesterday from the time I'm videoing this. And I checked out the Kershaw Livewire. Actually, really not a nice knife. I really like that one. These are all about $300, uh, give or take, right? They're all about $300 out-the-front automatic knives. I wanted an out-the-front automatic knife because when operating it, and I do intend to use this, it takes up less space. And what I mean by that is, for example, this is an auto. This is too large for me to personally carry. It's It's not a size I would carry. But to operate it, you need all of this space, right? Because that's how much space it takes to operate it. Whereas if you have an out the front auto in the, the size that I think is a good size for everyday carry, it takes up this space. The physical size of the blade extended from the body, that's the space that it takes. So it's easy to pull out of the pocket and not worry about Anything that's around it, because often the reason I say that is because oftentimes I'm in tighter quarters and I, I don't want it to like hit anything or do anything. I want it to be a controlled uh, space. I know that's a very niche uh, reason for wanting it, but that's my reason for wanting the out the front auto. So I checked out the Kershaw Livewire, almost bought that one. Uh, I'm going to, like, my original knives that I had back in the day, they were Kershaw knives. They were very popular. They marketed them. They were available everywhere. So I do like Kershaw. The action on it was really nice. A little light, meaning that when, when you're operating it, like here, it's a it's smoother and lighter, which is kind of good for me. I um, That's why I almost bought it. The Hogue Exploit was also a contender and I felt like the action would break in, meaning this part, not the action inside, but the, this part here that I'm interacting with. So the Hogue exploit was a contender, but the body of it was a little bit bigger than I wanted. Um, but the grip on it was nice, and it better be because Hogue makes grips for uh, firearms as well. Microtech Ultratech, obvious choice for most people. It is a well-known knife um, around the $300 price point, top quality. I've owned a few Microtech in the past. I've always sold them. I don't know why. Um, I think I know why, and I'm going to talk about that at the end. Benchmade Shootout. Now, this is the Benchmade Shootout is, um, it's like this material. Uh, what is it called? FRN or something. So it had a little bit of flex to it. I didn't like the colors. Other than that, I actually really liked the knife, the Benchmade Shootout. Um, I don't have a problem with my scales being, you know, a little flexible and everything like that. I'm not a knife snob. So that was a contender. I just didn't like the colors on it. That was my legit the only reason I didn't go more towards that one. Benchmade Phaeton. That was another one that I actually was very, very interested in. Um, I have, do I have any Benchmades? See, I don't even know what I have. So these are Spydercos. Uh, I do have a Benchmade knife, but it's a really old one. And it's just a standard operating. Um, but Again, I'm going to talk about the main reason why I went with this one. Two reasons, actually, I went with this one. One, the if you if I zoom in, you can see there's two little marks right there. What I was told is there's actually a couple ball bearings underneath this, and the way this interacts with the perceived feel of it. I love the ramp. You got nice traction here, and then you have proper ergonomics pulling back right but when you're operating this it's actually rolling on a couple ball bearings so it's a very smooth operation most automatics out the front they 
are just, I don't want to say friction fit, but they just ride up against the body of the knife. And you, this is just smoother right away. So I liked that. The other thing that I really liked was the size of the blade. The size of this blade is has much more thickness and body to it than the other options when I was looking at them. The other ones just looked delicate. I don't know how else to say it. Um, I, I'm sure they would be more than adequate for my use, but this one just looked more robust. Part of it obviously is, you know, the thickness, but also the uh, stone washing on it. I typically don't go with Tanto, but I usually like Drop Point, but this one just looked really cool. Plus, I know this green, as I use it and wear it, is going to patina and show marks and scratches, and it's going to look awesome. So I'm excited to put this thing to task and use it. It's uh, Emax or LMAX steel. I don't know anything about the steel, guys. You guys are probably way more knowledgeable on this stuff than I am. So feel free, feel free to educate me if there's something I'm missing. You know, I'm, I'm willing to learn. Um, and I might occasionally do a knife video. But uh, it, it's not my main hobby. This I actually picked up for practical use. In the office, in my environment here, honestly, this is what I use. I use the James, and I'm due for uh, changing out the blade. This is what I use for cutting down boxes, um, or opening boxes. For for breaking them down, I actually use an old um, assist opening uh, Kershaw, big, big knife that I've had for a long time, and it holds an edge incredibly well on it. I ha I've only sharpened it like a couple of times. But this right here is what I use for opening boxes. This thing right here, I'm going to actually use at work, and I'm going to I'm gonna um, use it. I'm going to tear it up a little bit. It's probably going to get broken or damaged at least, so I'll report back on how well it holds up. I'm a little concerned about gunk and dirt and stuff like that, but they can be taken apart and cleaned. So there it is. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, 3.8 ounces. I know I didn't cover the measurements. Uh, there's tons of videos out there covering all that, but 3.8 ounces, I'm good with that. I'm sure I could have went lighter. But I'm good with that weight. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next vid.